By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am pumped. I am super excited to bring you this episode because this is the first episode of the first round of the video series of the Raging Bull series 2023. And I'm just really looking forward to making these series with you. I mean, it was a blast to live stream from the Raging Bull. I've seen so many good matches and now we're going to look at these matches one at a time. And we're here in round number one of the Raging Bull series, the old school magic tournament held in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. This tournament starts with 76 players. We've got six rounds and then of course we have the top eight. So this is just really, really exciting. In this first round, we have Yoop playing his signature Urnum on Ice deck. So that's serious stuff. And he's playing against Martin from the Rhineland Avengers. And he's playing a mono black deck with Netling Imps. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to show you this match. The decks are just awesome. I, I love I love the black deck, you know. It's, it's got a lot of classics in there like, you know, Bad Moon. And as I mentioned, Netling Imp and Juzem Jin. Anyway, before I start with the deck deck, I would just like to mention that as always, if you want to go straight to the match, I know some people prefer going to the match first, check out the deck decks afterwards. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the match action. And also in the description below, you can find more information about the rule set, what that all means, and a nice link to my Patreon page, by the way. So check it out, patreon.com slash timmytalks if you want to support my channel as a sponsor. Okay, enough talk. Now let's go and have a look at the decks. We're going to start with the deck of Martin, his mono black brew. And here we see the deck of Martin. So, I mean, look at this deck. It's quite interesting because usually with mono black, it is way more aggressive. I would say this is a bit more, there are aggro elements in this deck, but this is like aggro and mid range, and there are also some control cards in here. So it's quite nice. I'm liking this mix of different strategies. And what you do see here, of course, is that even though he's playing with bigger creatures like Sengir Vampire and Juzum Jin that have slightly higher casting cost, he is, of course, also playing with Dark Rituals. So those rituals can really help him to cast those creatures pretty early in the game, you know, despite the fact that they have a higher CMC. Uh, we also see three Bad Moons in here, which I think is pretty cool. You don't see that many Bad Moons. So Bad Moon and Enchantment, one black and one, that says all black creatures gain plus one, plus one. So that's going to work really well here for uh, for Martin. Then when we're looking at the, the rest of the deck, we also see quite a lot of artifacts in here. Three Icy Manipulators, and of course those Icy's go together really well with those Netling Imps. Remember, Netling Imp forces a creature of the opponent to attack. They have to attack with that creature, and if they cannot, the creature is destroyed. So what you can do is you can use your Netling Imp and say, okay, I want you to attack with creature A. Then you can tap that creature with the Icy, meaning it cannot attack because it's tapped, and then it gets destroyed. I mean... It's a pretty nice combo. You do see the, of course, the IC combo more with Royal Assassin, but I'm kind of liking it here with Netling Imp because it works just as well. And of course, the Netling Imp also works really well with the Sengir Vampire. And also it's a great way to kind of, you know, get rid of a blocker if you want to. There's also a little synergy between Netling Imp and Paralyze. We see three Paralyzes here main. So of course, Paralyze says the creature does not untap as normal and uh, the controller can pay four during the upkeep to untap the creature. Right, So when you've got your Netling Imp and your opponent doesn't want to attack with the creature because it's got the Paralyze on it, you can force it to attack. And then, of course, it's going to tap, meaning you will have to pay the upkeep cost again. So I like how versatile the Netling Imp is as a creature. There are just so many fun things you can do with it. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, I like the inclusion of the one Drain Life that, make, that means you can win out of nowhere. I also like the one Neveneral's Disc. I think when you're playing monocolored, especially black, but I also noticed that as a blue player, it's just really nice to have access to a disc because it just can solve so many problems that's kind of difficult for your color to solve. For example, um, you know, for black, it's really difficult to get rid of artifacts. It's difficult to get rid of enchantments. And that's, of course, what the disc can do for you. Um, looking at the sideboard, there is uh, an interesting play set that I want to discuss. And, and those are the Underworld Dreams. I think many black decks play them main. So it's interesting to see it in the sideboard. I do think it's a good sideboard card because, you know, if you're going to run into more controlling decks, Underworld Dreams can be, you know, absolutely brilliant. So I do understand it's here in the sideboard. I wonder if he's going to bring it in here against Yoop because Urnum on Ice is also a deck that loves to draw a lot of cards. It's got the blue power, but also has the Sylvans. And of course, with the Underworld Dreams, you can kind of, you know, punish your opponent for drawing cards. And the cool thing, by the way, is with Sylvan Library, with Sylvan Library, you draw three cards or you may, and then you put them back on the top of your library. 
So that means when you have an Underworld Dreams, you already get the three damage just by looking at those three cards that you take with the Sylvan. So Sylvan becomes really bad as soon as uh, your opponent has an Underworld Dreams out. So I'm kind of expecting Martin to bring that in in game number two. Okay, this is the deck of Martin. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Earn Him on Ice by Yoop. And here we see the signature deck of Yoop Urnum on Ice. So it's named after the Urnum Jins and the Ice Storms. Now what this deck wants to do, to do right is it wants to ramp in that turn one, right? It wants to play out a Lanor Elves or maybe a Mox or that single Birds of Paradise that's in here. And then turn two, ideally play out an Ice Storm. Ice Storm is Sorcery from green, one green and two. And it says destroy target land. So you can just take out a land, slow your opponent down while you're going faster with your ramp from the turn one play, right? And then hopefully in turn three, you can or play out a big creature like an Urn of Jin, perhaps even a Sarah Angel if you like find the right mana um, and, and the right accelerators, of course. But what you can also do is play out a Sylvan Library. And by using the Sylvan Library very aggressively, you get ahead on cards as well. So you're already ahead on, on mana because you just took out a land and you're ramping yourself, but now you're already ahead with cards as well. So that's a very strong component of this deck. And don't forget, it's not just green white, there's also that blue power splash, right? We've got Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, and we also have the Brain Geyser. Now, Time Walk is also quite good in this deck because this is creature heavy. It, it wants to win mainly through combat damage, right? That's really the big idea of the deck. It wants to win with that Sarah Angel, it wants to win with the Urnum. So that makes Time Elemental quite good in this build. It also has some of the control elements, obviously, when you're playing with white. It's got the Disenchants and the Swords to kind of solve your problems. I always like the combination as well between Disenchant and, um, you know, the, the land removal. Because if you take away the lands, there's a big chance that your opponent will have some mana rocks and is still able to generate mana or to kind of ramp up despite the fact that you've taken out a land. Then if you have the Disenchant in place to take out that key soul ring or take out, you know, that Mox or, you know, play it on a Black Lotus, force your opponent to use it at instant speed when they really don't want to. You know, so Disenchant in combination with land removal, I've always felt that that is quite strong. Um, looking at uh, the sideboard of the deck, we see some uh, some Suchis, obviously, against the Abyss. And also, of course, some sideboard plan when the opponent, you know, drops maybe a city in a bottle. Perhaps you then want to take out your Urnums, take in, put in the extra Sarah. We've got two Argovian Pixies as well. Some Mazes of If against very aggressive decks. So, you know, there are multiple strategies that this Urnum on Ice deck can, can take on. Overall, it's a very strong deck. There's a, a reason we see this deck in a lot of top eights. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's a great deck. And, and Yoop, of course, being the, the designer of the deck, knows exceptionally well how to play with this. Anyway, this is the deck of Yoop Urnum on Ice. We've looked at the other deck. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. Yoop sitting on the left with Urnum on Ice. He's on the play here, starting with the Plains and a Mox Sapphire. Pass turn to Martin. He's on the draw. Starting with a Mishra's Factory and a pass. Beautiful altar. There's a strip mine. No strip on the factory. Passing the turn. No green mana for you, by the way. His deck really needs green. No Ice Storms. No Lanawar Elves. There's green. Are we going to see an Urnum, perhaps? Going to tap one. There's a Lanawar Elves. So that Savannah is going to help him a little bit. If Martin has... For example, a single, I would really play that next time. Look at this. Maybe Yoop is concerned about that as well. Taking care of the swamp with the strip mine. There's a paralyze. That's a perfect target for the paralyze, of course. And there's a pass. Could choose to disenchant it, of course, an end step. I guess choosing not to. Play out a tundra here. So four mana available now. Tapping two. There's a Sylvan, and that Sylvan is quite good for uh, for you, Pierre. Tapping three, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. Are we going to see a Swords on the Hippie here? Tapping two, there's a Disenchant on the Paralyze. Untapping, looking at the top three cards. Ooh, two Lance and a Lanor Elf. That's not good. That's bad news. Just drawing the one. Play out the Tropical Island. Oh, Sarah Angel was the last card in hand. That is a great pick. That is a super last card for you, Pierre. That's going to block the Hypnotic Spectre. Let's see if Martin has, for example, another Paralyze. 
Ooh, there's the Natalie Imp. Not going to do much, though. Because, of course, the Sarah doesn't have to tap when she attacks. And Yup again looking at the top three cards. Wonder if he's going to take an extra card. Of course, the Nettling Imp is kind of useful to get rid of that uh, Lunarer Elves. Can force a Lunarer to attack next turn. And then it's going to be killed, of course, by, for example, if not Spectre or the Factory. Attacking here with both for that reason. Sending back the Sarah Angel. Going to take the damage here, so not going to bite. Maybe a little bit worried. There's a balance. So that was a good decision here by Martin not to block. And look at the cards. He's losing a Juzam Jin, a Drain Life, and I think it was a land there. So losing three cards. This is a great play here by Yoop. And both players have an equal amount of lands, an equal amount of creatures as well. There we see a Black Knight 2 2 first strike pro white. That is actually really good because it means that Yoop cannot block it with the Sarah Angel. And he cannot play his swords on it. So Black Knight's actually pretty difficult to deal with here for Yoop. I mean, he needs an Urnum Jin. Ooh, this is important. Taking care of the maze. That is pretty big. Look at that. Again, attacking with both. Really not caring about the Lanerer here. Knowing, of course, that next turn Martin would force Yoop to attack with it anyway. And uh, Martin, by the way, dropped to 15 after that attack. Now he's dropping to 18. Well, Yoop is dropping to 18 after the attack of the Black Knight by Martin. It's quite an entertaining first game here. Both players are still really in it. 18 life for Yoop, 15 life for Martin. Attack again with the Angel, putting Martin here on 11. There's another Lanawar Elves. I mean, at least he can chump the Knight for one turn, kind of saves him uh, two points of damage here. Ooh, hard to see this. This is a bad moon. Hard to see with the glare. There's the block. If it is a bad moon, that would be pretty good for Martin, meaning he can hit for three every turn. Three cards now for you. Hard to see here. I believe, again, I see some lands there. Look at that. I mean, he's just kind of stuck on land. Then again, I mean, the angel's still doing work. Look at the life total of Martin there. He's dropped all the way to seven. There will be a moment where he's just going to go for an alpha strike. Not now, of course. He still has a turn to go. Putting Yoop here on 15, but he needs to find an answer to that Sarah Angel. Another land here. Yoop not really finding anything useful. But as long as the Sarah is alive, he's winning this. Putting Martin on 3. And he's going to animate attack with everything. That makes absolute sense. And the question here is, should Yoop block anything? What if Martin, for example, has a Howl from Beyond here? I would be tempted to just let everything go because, I mean, you're pretty high up on 15. It would mean, if that's a bad moon, which I think it is, he would take 3, 5, 8, 10 points of damage. He would drop to 5. So he is blocking the Nettling Imp here, taking the rest of the damage. Now, do remember, of course, these players don't know each other's lists. I mean, we know that Martin is only playing, and that's game, okay? That's game. Wow, that Sarah Angel was dominant. What I wanted to say here is that, of course, we know that Martin only plays with one Drain Life, but, of course, Yoop doesn't. We know that Yoop doesn't play with Gi uh, Giant Grove, for example. Of course, Martin doesn't, right? So, we're making assumptions here and decisions based on the knowledge because we've seen the decks. But that's, of course, different here for these players. Anyway, they're going to shuffle up now dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Martin, of course, on the play and look at that. Yoop taking a mulligan here. So it's going to go down to six in hand. Oh, and the Library of Alexandria, turn one for Martin. Can Yoop find an Ice Storm to get rid of this? If he can't, it's looking great here for Martin, of course. Lana Rael's turn one by Yoop passing the turn. Look at Martin go, drawing an extra card. There we see a gloom from the sideboard. So that's definitely coming in. And the question now is, are we going to see an Ice Storm from Yoop? He's got three mana. I mean, the fact that he's, you know, doubting what to do kind of shows that he doesn't have the Ice Storm to me. Because it's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? Passing the turn here after attacking with the Lunarer Elf. So Martin on 19. There's a Black Knight 
Things are looking up for Martin here. I mean, this is just uh, perfect for him. Every turn that, that Loa stays on the battlefield, his chances of winning are increasing. Are we going to see an Urnum now, for example? We're going to see a Time Walk. Okay, that's something. Maybe he can find an answer. Another land. I mean, beautiful mana base. Look at all those beta duels. It's crazy. Passing the turn. No Sarah Angel, no Urnum. Playing a land here, drawing a card, of course, with the uh, Library of Alexandria. Tapping three. Are we going to see an Hypnotic Spectre here? There's a Gloom. So Gloom means that all the white spells are now taxed with three. And there's a Disenchant for five. <laughs> I mean, that's enough. That'll do it. And the attack with the Black Knight, putting you here on 18. At least he can attack now with the Lanerer. Putting Martin on uh, on 18 as well. It's something. There's a pass. There's nothing here. Look at that Black Lotus. Disenchant planes in hand. That is not what you want to see when you're playing against an active library of Alexandria. Martin here activating again. Going to go up to 8 cards. Tapping 4. Are we going to see a Juzam Jin? No, we're going to see a uh, Icy Manipulator. Another attack with the Black Knights. There's a Disenchant here on the Icy. Drawing for turn. That's looking like a pretty good hand there by Martin. Okay, this is big. This book needs to stay on the battlefield. And I like this play. I like the Black Lotus here because if for any reason Martin is able to destroy the book, he can uh, in response draw a card. That's what I wanted to say. But look at that. Yoop, very aggressive. Drawing a card immediately, perhaps hoping to find, for example, a Sylvan, because he's still at two mana open, but he attacks with the Lanerer instead. There we see a stamped basic swan, by the way, by the Rhineland Avenger logo. Martin being part of the Rhineland Avengers. Gonna tap four, Nevenerals Disc. Taking it back though. Drawing a card first, Dan plays out the disc. Ooh, and look, the, look at the card he drew. Juzam Jin. I do understand the play of this disc. He, he knows how good that uh, Jam Day Tome is. He needs to get rid of the Tome. Gonna draw a card here with the Tome. So I get this play by Martin. He needs to get rid of that Jam Day Tome because that is what's, uh, what could potentially get you back into the game. Taking a damage here. I think he goes to... Or not taking a damage. He's on 14, just passing the turn. I wonder what card he has in hand there. Perhaps it was it's a Brain Geyser, or maybe it's a Sarah Angel, and he's like, oh, I'm not going to play it out because of the disc. Anyway, first to Swamp here. Attack for two. It's going to chump here because of that disc. And this is kind of difficult now for Martin, you know. Does he want to play out a bigger creature even though he's got the the Nevenerals disc or does he want to blow up the disc lose his black knight I mean maybe you do you know blow up the disc get rid of the book and then just play out a big creature Ooh, it looks like he's gonna play out a big creature playing out the Sengir so he's kind of now making the decision okay the book alone is not gonna be enough to to use my uh, my Nevenerals disc it's gonna draw another card Okay, there's a Library of Alexandria here for you, but he only has two cards in hand, though, so that's not going to help him much. Okay, look at that, an Urnum Jin. So that Urnum is, of course, a great blocker for the Black Knight. Problem now is that Sengir is going to fly over the Urnum. And I believe, but maybe I was mistaken, I believe Martin still has a Juzem Jin in hand. One Sarah there for you. I mean, that Sarah was so good in, uh, in game number one. Single-handedly won him the match. There's another Swamp, probably having seven in hand now, going to use the Loa. Right, exactly. Going to go back up to eight. Attacking here for four. So you going to drop to ten. Martin's still on 17. And he's going to use the disc. Look at that. So he is using the disc now. And 
there's the uh, Juice Amgen 5-5 powerhouse and another Black Knight. So lots of pressure. Probably going to see the Sarah here. I mean, one of the things that you can do next turn is, you know, double block the Juzam with the Factory and the uh, Sarah. I mean, this is going to be an interesting moment here. Because what he can do as well is, is deciding to block the Black Knight. I wonder if Martin's going to attack with the Black Knight, though. There's an Icy. Ooh, that really changes the situation. I mean, what Martin can do now is attack with both, and the moment that Jupe animates the factory, he can tap down the, uh, ooh, the Mishra's factory. This is kind of interesting a line of play. I think Martin's making a little bit, little bit of a mistake here, because now he's losing the, uh, the Black Knight. Could have chosen to tap down the Mishra's factory instead. And then, of course, Jupe would have chosen or to chum block the Juzam or to take all the damage because he cannot block the Black Knight because it's pro-white. Doesn't matter much though because look at that, Yoop's on five, Martin still has that active Loa and that Library of Alexandria is kind of the story of the game, right? Attack for four here, Martin on 12. Untapping here. Playing a land, probably going to use the Loa again. No cards in hand anymore here for Yoop. Playing out a bad moon. So that means the uh, Juzam is now a 6-6. Six, six. Wow, that's big. So what he could do now is tap down the factory. Yeah, wait for Yoop to animate and then tap down the factory. So he's going to animate the factory. And in response, he can block it or tap it. He's not doing it, though. Interesting, because before blockers are declared, he can tap down the factory. And then it can no longer be assigned as a blocker. Playing a double ritual. Look at that. Two hypnotic specters. But that does mean that you probably is going to get another turn. Oh, no. Oh, of course, he's got the, the bad moon, so they're not 2-2s, two they're 3-3, three, three, so they're 6 in the air. Anyway, Martin winning here, game number two. And, I mean, I have to say, having a library of Alexandria is one thing, but also winning with it, that's another. I mean, I, I'm i just going to confess here, I've lost matches where I had an active Loa and my opponent didn't. And I, I'm still don't really understand what happened in those matches, but it does happen. Not often. But it does. Anyway, it is 1-1. One, one. Uno, uno. So that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. The decider here in round one at the Raging Bull series. What a beautiful first match we have here. Look at this. A double mulligan here for Martin in the deciding game. Ouch. That is painful. Looks like Yup hasn't taken a mole at all. Looking there at the hand size. Starting with a Tropical Island pass. Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, maybe if this hippie can stick, he's got a chance. Tundra, though, oh, sorts to plowshares. Yeah, this is going to be super tough for Martin. I understand this play by him. Oh, man, insult after injury with that Ancestral Recall. That is just brutal. What I wanted to say is I understand this play. I mean, you got to take the risk when you're already two cards behind before even the game starts. you got to hope that that hippie sticks so that you kind of can fish some uh, cards out of the hand of your opponent. Was it meant to be though? Disenchant on the Felwer. Taking care of some lands here, taking care of the mana base. I mean, this is looking really rough for Martin. At least he's got another Swamp to play out. Two cards in hand still, three actually. Let's hope for the best. There's a nice Storm, so really gonna go on the mana denial plan. There's the pass. I mean, Martin, you know, ran out of lands. There's a factory, Lanawer Elves, passing the turn. Okay, there's another land, that's something. Hey man, as long as you're alive, you can try to get a win. Tapping five, are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There's a Sarah Angel, 4-4 four, four Flyer. Terror though, coming out of the sideboard, I believe. Very good sideboard card against uh, the deck of Yoop here. Hypnotic Spectre, okay. Again, if there's not an answer, okay, there's an answer. <laughs> I'll just kind of keep hoping. 
that uh, that this is going to be turned into an actual game number three. But yeah, it's going to be really rough here for Martin. Anyway, taking three points of damage. And he's now in 21 still. There's an icy manipulator. Hands empty here by Martin. Animating, attacking for three. So Martin going to drop here to 18 past turn. There is a uh, Library of Alexandria there in hand, so perhaps he's going to build up. There's a pass turn. Not quite sure how many cards in hand. Perhaps six there. Lots of lands I saw in that hand there of Yoop and, of course, at Loa. So perhaps he's just going to save up. It looks like that's exactly what he does. Passing the turn here to Martin. There's the animation, gonna attack, he can pump it with the other factory. And of course he can use the IC manipulator also. And uh, it's it's interesting to see how quickly Martin uses the IC. I mean, he can just wait until Yoop, of course, animates it in response and tap it before blockers are declared. Anyway, he's gonna swing in for three here. I do think this is a good move. At least try to put some pressure on the life total here of Yoop. It's going to drop to 17. There is a maze of if though. Could attack here for 3. Put Martin on 15. Interesting by the way that he plays out the maze. Really hard to see how many cards he's got in hand exactly. Because I thought he was on that Library of Alexandria plan. But now chooses to be a little bit more defensive with the maze of if. Passing the turn here. And now he's going to tap down the uh, the Launderer in the upkeep. Makes sense, denying at least your opponent of the, of, of the green mana. And going to tap three. Okay, this is actually pretty good. The Natling Imp in combination with the Icy Manipulator. That is pretty good. There's a little killing machine right here. Now we see the Library of Alexandria hitting the board. Passing the turn here. So perhaps six in hand now for Yoop, and then he would go to seven next turn. But now, of course, Martin can uh, next turn at least kill the Lanower Elves with that Icy Manipulator uh, Netling Imp Synergy. The combo, I should say. There's a tap of a black. Gonna animate the factory, attack with the factory. I mean, I assume he's going to send it back here. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank, perhaps thinking about chumping it with the with the Lanarer or trying to kill it. So animating the factory. And it looks like they're going to trade. Surprising here. Tapping it down now with the Icy Manipulator and then forcing it to attack probably. Exactly, that's what's happening. Forgetting to tap down the Icy, by the way. The Icy should be tapped right now because he does that in the upkeep of Yoop. You know, he uses the Icy to tap down the Lunar Elves. And then in the main phase, before combat, he says, you know, you have to attack with the Lunar Elves when it's, uh, when it's combat. Four mana here for Yoop. Going to draw uh, drop card number five. Uh, land number five, sorry. Actually, it's land number seven. I'm rambling here. Anyway, we see an Ice Storm here on the factory, and of course, Alana Riles is going to die because it was forced to attack. There's the Bad Moon. Attacking with the 2-2, two -two, sending it back with the Maze. And, I mean, the thing here is the Icy Manipulator is problematic. I mean, Yoop is not going to play out the Sarah Angel, you know, because it's going to die to the Nettling Imp Icy Manipulator combo. He needs to have at least... Or sorts to plowshares for Netling Imp or a disenchant to get rid of the uh, of the icy manipulator. So this might help here. Yeah, of course he's gonna tap down now the maze of if with the icy manipulator. So maybe the Sylvan's gonna help to find uh, an answer here for Yoop. He's really taken hostage at the moment. Taking damage here, dropping to 14. Gonna look at the top three cards. I see a Suchi there, that's one of the cards, hard to see the others. I mean, he needs a disenchant, a disenchant or a swords. He has to break it up there. Gonna draw another card with the Loa. 
I mean, at least it's going to go through his deck really quickly with that active library of Alexandria. And again, you know, at the end step, if Yoop doesn't play out any creatures, I mean, Marty can just tap down the maze and attack again with the Nightly Imp. Oh, look at that. He is going to feed it, though, playing out the uh, Lana Ralphs. It makes sense, though, because it's going to save him some damage. And remember, uh, uh, you know, life equals cards here because he's got the Sylvan Library. So I understand this play here by Yoop. So what I expect to happen here is that Martin's probably going to tap down the maze. Then next turn, he's going to attack here with the Imp. And then Yoop's just going to chump. It's going to save him two life. It makes sense. There's another Swamp. Yep, there's the attack. I mean, this makes perfect sense from both players. There's the chump. And there's the pass. Looking at the three cards again. Is that a balance there in the middle? It's really hard to see. Don't think I saw a disenchant there. There's a Mox Emerald now in his hand. Let's see what he's going to do. Exactly. Play a Pendlehaven, draw a card for turn. Then he can drop the Emerald. Then he doesn't have to discard. I mean, this this Icy Manipulator and Nettling Imp are really taking Yoop hostage, you know? And it, it's a way for Martin to really get back into this. I mean, look at the life total of Yoop. He's on 14. I mean, is he going to drop maybe another Lana where else? Would be interesting also because he has that Pendlehaven. It would again save him some damage. Okay, dropping the Mox Emerald 7 in hand, passing the turn. And Martin here, by the way, he didn't use the uh, Icy on end step. That's a little bit surprising. Tapping 4. Okay, there is, or 5, I guess. There's a Sengir Vampire. Remember, the Sengir is a 5-5. Five -five because of the bad moon. And this is now really a problem for Yoop. I mean, he could actually lose here. He's on 11. He's looking at 7 damage next turn. He's on a 2 turn clock. He needs something here. I mean, he's got a lot of cards, but they're all pretty much useless. There's the factory. There's a Black Lotus. Does he maybe have a Brain Geyser, like play out a huge Brain Geyser to try to find some kind of answer? You know, keep a white open in case he finds another Swords? I mean, remember, he's already played out, I believe, two Swords to Plowshares already, so only two more left in the deck. He, he hasn't played out a single Disenchant, I believe, so he does have uh, some Disenchants left. Or but did he play Disenchant on the Thower Stone earlier? I'm not quite sure now. Anyway, we'll just have to wait and see. You appear on 11. Okay, there's the balance. Yeah, so it was a balance. Balance, of course, being tricky because it means you've got to discard a lot of cards. But you've got to do what you've got to do. Martin, you're losing the Sengir then, and of course, Netly Imp. And look at that. He's going to chuck the Lotus. Or, sorry, the Library of Alexandria. Why not? I mean, it's done its work. Oh, wow, that Nettling Imp was so good. I mean, it doesn't really matter anymore if Martin wins or loses third game. Just the fact that he, he got to show us his Icy Manipulator Nettling Imp combo here at the Raging Bull series is just fantastic. So the balance resolves, I guess. Look at that, sacking the Lotus. He's probably going to play out a big creature now. There's a Sarah Angel. Does he have another big creature there in hand? <laughs> Tapping four. Are we going to see... Okay, we're going to see a Suchi, not an Urnum. So Suchi hitting the board. So that means that next turn he can start dealing some damage. Let's see if Martin can find an answer. Tapping two here. There's a Black Knight. Does have, of course, the Icy to tap down one of two attackers. That's something. And that Black Knight's quite good against the uh, Mishra's Factory, of course, of Yoop. So, I mean, the Black Knight's helping a little bit. There's a tap. Tapping down the Suchi. 
Now we can look at the top three cards again because of the Sylvan still on 11, Martin on 18. Drawing a card for turn. Attacking for four here. Martin dropping to 14. Tapping four. Okay, there's an Urnum. So four, five Urnum. And I guess after sideboarding, Yupi's just playing with a lot of creatures. Maybe he put in the extra Sarah Angel and put in both Suchis, and he kept the Urnums as well. Probably took out the Argovian Pixies because they're not that good against the Black Knights. There's the untapped, so things are really looking up now for you, taking back control after that balance. And uh, wants to attack now, so I'm expecting uh, Martin here to uh, tap one of the creatures. <laughs> Tapping down the Sarah, that makes sense. The double Black Knight's quite good, you know, because then he can double block the Suchi. I mean, it's four points of first strike damage. I think he's just gonna attack here with the, uh, with the Urnum, right? Oh, of course, there. I keep forgetting the, the Bad Moon. The Bad Moon makes them 3 3, so he's got six first strike damage. I keep forgetting the Bad Moon. Sorry, guys. Anyway, pass turn by Martin here. I mean, that Bad Moon makes a difference. It means that it makes no sense to attack here for a Yoop with the Urnum. Because a double block with the Black Knight would kill the five toughness of the Urnum. Attack for four here. Martin go to 10. And I think Martin's really playing a great game. Remember, he started with five cards in hand, you know. I thought he was done and dusted, but now he's still alive. And maybe if he can find the right top deck, he can, can get back into this. For example, if he can find a Nevenerals disc, that would be quite good. Tapping down the Angel, taking four more, gonna go to six. He needs something now, he needs that disc. Okay, that's not, I mean, it's not great. Taking care of the maze at least. But I mean, you're not gonna attack, passing the turn again. And I mean, Martin's got one last turn, I think. And I think if you're Yoop, you now want to attack with everything, actually. Because, I mean, Martin cannot afford to let both 4-4s four go through. So he cannot double block. Exactly. Attacking with Suchi, Urnum, and Sarah Angel. Exactly. Has to separate the blocks. Taking 4, going to drop to 2. And I think this is the end of the road. Is there a card that can save? Yeah, he should have attacked with the factory there. Is there a card that can save Martin? No, 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 no. So this is it, Yoop winning it here in game number three. But what an exciting first match of the Raging Bull series. And I'm so looking forward to show you more of this tournament. If you don't want to miss a thing of the Raging Bull series, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Oh man, love it. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for supporting Timmy Talks. Please leave a like, a comment, and share this on your socials uh, if you want to, obviously. But uh, all those things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing you can do as well, and that is become a patron of the show. So you can sponsor Timmy Talks. Help me to continue making these videos for you. Um, it's really easy. You just go to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and check out the Patreon program. And you can already become a sponsor of the show for $1 a month. And for that money, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord page and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll.
Bumba Kajik! <laughs>